our next reader is Daniel Roscoe. Daniel Roscoe is the author of Orientation and Other Stories. Um, he's got something in the parentheses, and I'm not going to read it uh, because I can't pronounce any of it. Uh, he teaches in the creative writing program at the University of Idaho. Tonight, Daniel will read from his novel in progress, tentatively titled A Life's Work. Mackie agreed, 
and the week worked out fine, and he had a job. Cheech and Chong had handed him a sheaf of paper, photocopies of his written, handwritten recipes, my atomic secrets, he'd said, and instructed Mackie to follow the directions exactly. He did not want any innovation, no fancying up. This was fine with Mackie. He was done with all that. He had other priorities. The Driftwood Diner was a small, poorly designed rectangular space, ten stools at a semicircular counter, and an array of two and four top tables squeezed around the intrusive counter for another 26 seats. If you came to the Driftwood to get yelled at, you had to come for lunch now, when Cheech and Chong was still served up because breakfast was Mackey's shift. There was no loss of business. In fact, breakfast was busier than ever. People came for the food. Although Mackey was committed to no innovation, to sticking to the recipes, he couldn't help himself. He spiced the poi dishes a bit more robustly. He sliced the toast a bit thicker, this at no cost, as he renegotiated the volume discount for bread with one of the hippie bakeries in town. He put out brown sugar instead of white. It cost the same, so why not? He mixed a simple rub of salt and sugar and paprika for the span, giving it a blackened look that people loved. <laughs> he simply did what he'd done all his life, improvised a little just to see what would happen. Sometimes this worked for him, as it did in the driftwood. Sometimes it didn't, as when he ended up in prison. <laughs> Breakfasts went smoothly, and unlike Brawley at McQueen's, Cheech and Chong harbored no jealousy for Mackey's gifts as a cook, no pride for his recipes tweaked by Mackey for the better, no loss of face for giving the breakfast shift to the better man. Hell, he'd give him lunch and never come in if Mackie had the time. He'd burn the place down for the fucking insurance money if he could get away with it. As long as the books showed Cheech and Chong in the black, he could give a shit. And that's what the books showed. So he was a lucky man to have Mackie, but he still paid him shit. He knew he could when Mackie requested cash. Under the table always meant sketchy, and sketchy was to Cheech and Chong's advantage. There was an upside for Mackie. Uh, I can't read my handwriting. <laughs> okay, I can't read that. Uh, that was an upside for Mackie. Uh, oh, he was so fast. I figured it out. So efficient and swift in getting the food out just right that the servers reaped the benefits via more tips, and so they all decided to start tipping out to Mackie at the end of his shift anywhere from twenty to forty dollars. They didn't tell Cheech and Chong. They didn't need to do this, and Mackie was discomfited. Acts of kindness always did that to him, but he was grateful. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.